Hello and good morning, Jerry. How are you doing today? No, I'm doing well. Thank you. I want to thank you for this book because I grew up reading football cards and baseball cards, and that's how I got to know who my favorite players were. This book gives me the story, the journey. Yeah, it was it, it was uh, kind of a incredible experience. Uh, I, I, I born in a town of 200 people in eastern Montana. Moved to a big town in Idaho of 3,000 people. So for me to be in Yankee Stadium and kicking field goals and playing football was fantasy land. <laughs> More of a dream than a a belief, you know, I could hardly believe I was there. And, uh, Tommy Joe Crutcher was our one of our linebackers. Coach asked me to take some of the guys and walk around the stadium a little bit, let them familiarize themselves with the stadium. And Tommy Joe was walking along with me, and he go, he's a Texas boy. And he says, boy, this place and sure hold a lot of high. <laughs> 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 and so, and it would hold a lot of hay, but it we held a lot of emotion and a lot of heart and a lot of everything. There were so many great events in that venue that uh, it was impressive and intimidating a little bit. Mm. I grew up in Billings, Montana. You said you're from a small town in Montana. What is it about those Montana soiled areas that really tr- turn us into machines where when we set out to do something, we accomplish it? You're from Billings? I am, yes, sir. Well, you know where Jordan is. Oh, of course I do. Oh, my God. (laughs) Well, it's about 90 miles north of Billings, or 60 miles north, somewhere like that. And uh, I, uh, you know, it was country, obviously. It was 200 people. It wasn't a metropolis. But my uncle, Bud, who was about six foot eight and pretty healthy guy, is in the Cowboy Hall of Fame. Wow. And my aunt, Bobby, his wife, is in the Cowgirl Hall of Fame. <laughs> so it's just natural that they finally put Jerry in the, the Hall of Fame. And I come from a long line of Hall of Famers, Hall of Fame people. Wow, wow. But uh, they, they were two wonderful examples for me. How did you open your heart to believe in this mantra, you can if you will, because that is such a powerful thing to say and to plant in this modern day generation. Shot myself with a 10 gauge shotgun <laughs> when I was 17, something like that, junior year. Uh, wanted to play, uh, continue to throw the disc and throw the shot put. And so I went out in the spring for that those two events. Qualified to go to state in the shot put. Uh, Went down to Boise, seven, eight thousand people. My hometown is three thousand now. Uh, I get in the ring, and the loudspeaker goes, "And now from Sandpoint, Idaho, (laughs) Jerry Kramer." And I got in the ring and threw, and the shot went thirty feet. (laughs) Three zero, right? I choked. And uh, they had four judges there, and they and they said, well, it was way up there. Uh, well, it, it was way up there up by those other indentations. I didn't see where it lit. And they went through that conversation for 15 minutes, and I'm steaming because I made a fool of myself. And I was an abysmal failure. And they finally said after 15 minutes, let's give him another throw. And now I'm angry. Mm -hmm. Well, anger makes you strong and fear makes you weak. That's a fundamental statement. So they call me to throw again, and I'm angry. I am really angry. And I get in the ring, and I'm cussing myself and telling myself what a fool I am. And I throw 51-10. And I break a state record a 17 year state record and I win the event. Mm-hmm. Now some, all of that had to do with my mental condition, mm-hmm. had to do with my mind, not my body, not my arm, not my wrist, my mind. And so I started to think about generating anger before a game. Mm-hmm. 
And so I imagined myself in a situation where my defensive tackle had killed my dog, he'd, he'd shot my children, he burned my house, he raped my wife, and that son of a gun was going to pay. <laughs> and so I tried to play angry and intelligent, keep them, keeping them together, not being stupid to where you get penalties, but playing with anger and emotion. So I did for 11 years. When you play that hard, because I'm a third-degree black belt, and we always went into every match, you know, with the idea that winning is a choice. But you also have to keep in mind that, you know, it's not if you get injured, it's when you get injured. And you faced a lot of walls. If you had today's modern-day medicine, my God, can you imagine the machine you would still be today? <laughs> I love that comment, winning is a choice. That's, uh, that's going into my repertoire. Uh <laughs> I, I believe that. I, I really believe that. And, 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 and it goes with life, too. Winning in life is the same as winning at the game. It mm-hmm. takes the same character, the same qualities, the same commitment, the same intensity. Uh, so it's a, it's a wonderful ride, and it's an interesting ride. And I've had a, way more than my share. And the book is full of celebrity contact with Rod McEwen and Frank Sinatra and wow. Elvis and uh, George C. Scott and, on, and Dean Martin, on and on and on. Uh, and the wonderful times uh, after football. So a uh, combination of things in the new book, and it was a fun book to write, to remember. Mm-hmm. Where can people go to get the book and to share some big-time love with you, man? Amazon, yep. Barnes & Noble, Walmart, Target, and any major bookstore, primarily. I love uh, it. So that's a start. I love it. Well, you've got to come back to this show any time in the future. The door is always going to be open for you, Mr. Jerry. Okay? Thank you.